At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, No one after lighting a lamp covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care then how you hear. For to the one who has, more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord The first reading from the book of Ezra reveals to us and proclaims the return of the exiles. So God, through the instrumentality of King Cyrus, once again in his divine mercy reaches out to his people. God reveals to us in and through the reading of Ezra that he is close to us. The people of Israel in their captivity have gone through a lot. They have lost everything their land, their properties, their identity, everything that they held very close to the heart was gone and the greatest love of their life, the temple, was destroyed. And when they were going through this kind of a moment, it is at that time the Lord inspires the King Cyrus, thereby revealing to his people that I see you, I hear you, and I know everything that you go through. There are times in our life that we feel we are abandoned. There are times we have prayed for certain intentions for many, many years, and we feel God is silent. Or the question comes, does God really hear our prayer? And today's reading from Isaiah reveals to us that God sees and God hears and God knows our pain and this God definitely and surely comes down to save us. And therefore we are invited to trust the Lord. We are invited to persevere in our walk with Him. We are invited even in difficult moments to keep our gaze on Him. We are invited to believe and to walk in his ways. We are reminded that faith is not just a matter of feelings, but that faith is a decision, a decisive choice for God, a decisive choice for Christ, irrespective of what we go through. And therefore, every experience of our life chisels, chisels us, prunes us, makes us who we are. We don't go through any experience for the sake of going through it. We don't go through anything for the heck of it. But in and through every experience, the good and the not so good, through successes, through joys, through sorrows, and even in our failures, mistakes, and disasters, God teaches us. And therefore, as believers, celebrating this Eucharist, we are invited to learn as we journey, just as God journeyed with Israel, taught Israel, molded and melted Israel, the same God in this Eucharist melts and molds us. And therefore we are invited, as in the gospel, to be a lamp that is lit. We live in a broken and a wounded world. And it is into this broken and wounded world that this Wounded Messiah, Jesus Christ, who was wounded for our transgressions, heals and binds our wounds. And he does not just come into our hearts to bind our wounds, to make us feel good, but rather he comes into our hearts to empower us to become, in turn, wounded healers. Wherever we are sent, a life of witness, in whatever state of life we are in. 
And therefore, as this word will become flesh on this altar, may this God who empowers us, may this God who journeys with us, may this God who fills us with his love and his mercy and his tenderness, fill us and empower us to become his witness. May he continue to transform us. And the greatest challenge, my dear brothers and sisters, is not just about celebrating this Eucharist in this half hour, but to live this Eucharist. The body continues to be broken, the body continues and the blood continues to be shed so that the Eucharist is continued to be lived in our daily lived experience. And therefore, as we celebrate this Eucharist, may we discover this extraordinary God in our ordinary circumstances. The God of Israel is our God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, Jesus Christ our Lord, may he continue to journey with us into his heart, into, as, into our lives. May he continue to journey with us as we journey ahead in our life. We pray for this grace in this Eucharist. Amen.